running back fake it to him. Cooper wants to throw it over the middle. He does, and it's caught by Corey Willis for a Central Michigan touchdown. Beautiful pattern directly in front of the defender, and the Chippewas are on the border. Central Michigan picked up their first win on the road under Coach Bonamigo and even up their record at 4-4. Four and four. We have the highlights of the win coming up on Chippewa Rewind. today. Let's play our style of football. Fast, physical, unrelenting. Fast, physical, and unrelenting in all phases. Offense, defense, and in the kicking game. We're going to be aggressive. We're we'll going to be aggressive. We don't back down from anybody. That's just how we are. We're going to take this win, man. The Chippewas were indeed rude house guests as they snuck out of Muncie with a 23-21 win. Welcome into Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jackson alongside your head coach. John Bonamigo, what a battle yesterday. You didn't play your best, but able to find a way to win. And that's what great teams do. Um, yeah, certainly uh, wasn't our best effort from an execution standpoint. Really hurt ourselves with a lot of penalties. Uh, turned the ball over in the first half. But in the end, we uh, did enough to win the ball game. Uh, a lot of lessons to be learned. But the bottom line is getting the win on the road against a team we hadn't had much success with over the last five years. So. I'll take it any way we can get it. You talked about the penalties, had 10 of them for 55 yards. How do you get that cleaned up for the future games? Well, I think um, one of the first things you need to examine as a staff and as a head coach is I like to look at who's committing the penalties. Um, we have some young players, inexperienced players, that are playing a lot for us. And uh, the trend has been that that's where the majority of the calls are coming from. Sometimes that's a learning experience. But it's something that we have addressed, we will address, we will continue to address. Um, you know, I was asked after the game by the media, you know, do you punish players, do you make them run? Uh, the answer is we don't really do any of those things, but I think the number one thing that you can always take from a player um, that they'll listen to is their playing time. So, um, you know, teams that are heavily penalized, it's not a, a that's not a formula to, to winning. It's not something that's acceptable to us. And so, you know, if we have to make changes, then we'll make changes. And you know, again, we'll despite the penalties, you were able to come out with a win, which, of course, that is most important. Let's jump into the highlights. We get the football first and a nice pass to Anthony Rice from Cooper Rush. Yeah, this is a great job here uh, by Anthony sitting down in the soft area of the zone. Cooper, ball gets out quick, and uh, Anthony's been able to turn up the field and get another uh, almost 10 yards there. He had four catches on the day for 40 yards. Another guy that had a terrific day, Mark Chapman, led the team with 100 yards. This is a great move on yeah, the outside. Mark had a big day here. This is a, you know, a bubble read here. Uh, he's able to make the first defender miss, turns up. Uh, you know, he gets to speed quickly, and that's, uh, you know, that's all the way down to the 10-yard line. That was a big play early in the game. One of two Cooper Rush touchdown passes, the first one from 15 yards out to Corey Willis. Yep. My man Corey, skinny post there. You see the play action fake holds the linebacker just enough, and then Cooper does a great job of just dropping it in right over the top of the linebacker. And uh, uh, again, Corey does a nice job of, with the stem of the route and keeping it nice and skinny away from the safety and uh, results a touchdown. Three minutes into the game, CMU's up seven to nothing. They add a field goal, make it 10 to nothing. Your defense came out, got two, three and outs to start the game. Terrific play from Blake yeah, Serper on the edge. It's a great hustle play by Blake. He's wearing number 21 in honor of Derek Nash and definitely represented himself, his defense, our team, and, and that number in a high fashion. And that was just one of the number of plays that he had yesterday. I thought he played a great football game. A couple of plays later, Josh Cox makes a tackle and you force him to punt the ball. Josh is actually in there at the nickel on, on that particular down. He comes, breaks up on the ball, and um, three and out is uh, a great formula, a great way you want to start off on defense. And as you mentioned, first two series started that way for them, and that was a great, uh, great way to start the ball game. 2.49 now remaining in the first quarter. This was a bit of a momentum changer. You're up 10 to nothing. Driving could potentially make it 17 nothing. A fumble here. Yeah, it was a huge uh, momentum change in the game. Uh, you know, we have a chance to go up, uh, you know, by three scores. 
you know, Roberson with a great run there. Um, you know, uh, Sean Payton had a saying that used to stuck with me. He said, you, sometimes you got to know when the journey's over as a back or as a receiver. When you get in, what he means by that is when you get into traffic, make sure you get, you know, two hands on the football that it's secured. And, you know, uh, in that situation, fighting for another half a yard, uh, you know, isn't uh, as beneficial or as, uh, or, you know, could prove costly if you leave the ball exposed. Well, you have a lot of traffic, people around it clawing away at it, and that's what happened. And again, you know, a young player uh, hasn't played a whole lot. A promising player, he'll learn from that, and we'll get better as a team as he will individually. Ball State gets it back. They get their first touchdown to end the first quarter. Yeah, there's a good route by their guy, number five here, uh, that catches in quarters, and, uh, you know, um, good. Uh, good pass by the freshman quarterback, and then, you know, they're right back in it now. Kayvon Frazier has been the guy to lay big hits for you all year long. How about this play right here? This is a great job by Kayvon, and, you know, uh, just coming up, putting the hit on the uh, quarterback, ball comes out, and, uh, you know, he also gets the uh, recovery there. So, excellent job, key part in the game, and uh, a very, very timely uh, turnover for us on defense. That was late in CMU territory. It keeps it 10-7. to Ball State does get back down into your territory late in the first half. They called a pass interference on this play. What did you think of the call? I think it was probably the right call. I don't think it was uh, overt, but I think, you know, in that situation there, um, it, it was probably the correct call. So then they are able to run it in from a yard out. They gamble with three seconds left, punch it in, and they take the lead going into the break. Yeah, it's a great second effort. I thought we were we had it stopped. I was kind of surprised when I saw the officials' uh, arms go up and signal a touchdown. I thought we had stopped it, but then after watching the tape, the kid did a great job on a second effort. But, uh, you know, we were right there. It's tough, tough sledding right there on a one-foot yard. So that's the end of the first half. Ball State takes their first lead, 14-10. to 10. They scored two touchdowns, both at the back end of the quarters. How frustrating is that? Because you played really well, but you didn't have a lead at the break. Well, it was frustrating because we weren't able to convert on some of our opportunities. Um, it was frustrating because we kind of started it off for them by turning the ball over to them. You know, we really felt like we knew exactly where we were at and exactly what we needed to do uh, to win the football game. We felt confident that we were the better football team and we just needed to play better. And I think. Defensively, we didn't. We definitely did that. We shut them out in the second half, and uh, it was enough to uh, get us the win. You know, offensively, we had some drives stall because of penalties, but we were at least able to get some uh, field goals and uh, score enough points to win. We'll check out that great defensive effort in the second half when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. What type of resolve we have, what type of faith, belief. Let's go play our best half, right? Our best half of football in this second half. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Thanks for joining us on Chippewa Rewind as we get set for that second half. Did you make any adjustments because your defense really came out and played well in that second half? Um, there weren't any real significant adjustments. Uh, it was more an emphasis of with our guys, especially in that front of staying gap sound. Um, you know, with uh, their offense, they ran a lot of zone schemes and their backs do a really good job of cutting back and finding a soft area and their, their linemen really try to cover you up. And, uh, you know, sometimes, particularly on the back side, you want to get a little anxious and, and over pursue and get out of your gap. So we just challenged our guys to stay dif disciplined, stick to the plan and, and be more gap sound. and. Uh, you know, we were able to do that and shut down the run, which kind of made them one-dimensional there in the second half. Ball State got the ball first. The Chippewas stopped them three and out. They stop you. You go back and forth. So your second drive is when you score that touchdown. And this is one of those throws from Cooper Rush that you just look at it and it's like, wow, he throws it all the way across the field and finds Corey Wallace <laughs> for 13 yards. Strong arm, obviously. Sure. No, this is, a, this is a great throw and catch. Uh, you know, uh, 
in a great route by Corey at a key time in the game and they kept the drive alive. All right, Jesse Kroll, could he be more wide open on this play? Well, if you see what there, we caught him in a blitz here, so um, you know we get man coverage, and uh, you know and that was pretty uh, pretty easy throw and catch. Jesse does a great job of uh, you know freezing the the, the coverage, and and uh, Cooper gives him a great easy catch to make for a touchdown. Thirty for thirty-eight for Cooper Rush, over three hundred yards. That was his second touchdown pass of the game. Made it 17 to 14 CMU. We push forward to the fourth quarter. You got to talk about your field goal kicker. He was three for three in those conditions, career long with a 47 yarder. Did a great job here. That was this was, uh, you know, I wasn't sure about sending him out on this one. I'll be honest with you, because of the wind, um, it was right into the wind, and we we're right there on the fringe of what we thought was uh, makeable field goal range. But Brian did a great job of, uh, of spinning it and. Uh, you know, keeping it online and just had enough juice there to get it over the crossbar. Did a fantastic job. Central Michigan 20, Ball State 14 at that point. You had four straight three and outs, as we said. This was deflating. They get a kick return. Yes, yeah, you know, they do a great job here. We, we, uh, we get sucked in. They run a cut back here. We, we lose containment. We're uh, a lot of things that, uh, that aren't good about this play. A couple missed tackles there. and. Uh, you know, you, you hate to see that. It's, uh, um, I don't want to say it's part of the game, but it is part of the game. Um, certainly we need to be much better on that, and we have been. And, you know, up until that, we were probably having one of our best games uh, covering kicks. But, uh, you know, they got us, and, you know, can't cry about it. Just got to do better next time and, and figure out what we got to do to win the game. Ball State takes their first lead of that second half, 21-20. And that's a point where you could potentially lay down. You've got a big third and 18 coming up. This was a huge play. Walker gets a screen and gets 19 yeah, this for was you. Yeah, this was a great job here of uh, getting the blocks downfield. Um, you know, you see you got a, a caravan of guys out there in front of them who all hit their marks. And uh, Tez does a great job of getting to the sticks and keeping the drive alive. 19 rushes for 87 yards yesterday for Martez. He had four more catches for 52 yards. Just a terrific game by number 27. That was a third down play. How about another third down play? Rice is able to make the grab. Yeah, this is a great job here by Anthony. Uh, knowing where the, what he's got to get. Again, on time throw. Good pocket for P Cooper to step up in and uh, you know, well executed in all areas there. A few plays later on this drive, you've got another third and short. Take us through this play and what did you see? You fell about a yard short again. Yeah, the first we just down. we got the ball to botch and he just couldn't quite get his shoulders squared up enough to get the first down. So we were uh, faced with a fourth and two. Um, you know, in my uh, my inexperience as a head coach, my first instinct was to go for it because I thought we would need more than uh, three points. But uh, the wisdom upstairs of Coach Welch prevailed and. <laughs> talked me out of it and uh, we decided to kick the field goal. So, uh, and I'm glad we did. That was the right thing to do there. Brian Evie delivered once again, 23-21, CMU back in front. They go for it. It's late in the fourth quarter, fourth and two. Terrific play by Cantavellos to get initial stop Great and then job. Waller finishes it off. Yeah, and, and, and this really good backside pursuit by everybody, keeping leverage on the football as that thing breaks back across the green. And I, mean, I don't want to bring back bad memories, but we had a couple, one a couple weeks ago that it, uh, it got outside of us, and uh, that result wasn't very good. Here we did our job. Everybody stayed home, kept leverage on the ball, kept pressing to the near hip, and rallied to the football and got him down and, and stopped. 2.25 now left after in the fourth quarter. You get the football back. You're throwing it on first and 10. Tell us why. Well, I just think it's, you know, we need to, we need to move the ball. And, uh, you know, we're... we're uh, you know, we, we've got a chance to score again, um, and I just felt like, um, you know, we needed to just keep do whatever we needed to do to keep the, the drive alive, to keep the, you know, keep the clock running. All right, so they do get an interception, a crazy play. It was kind of ripped away from Rice. Now, did you say the officials said that the play was reviewed? Yeah, they told me that it was. Uh, it was the first thing I asked, and you know, they claimed that they did review it. It must have been a very fast review. Um, you know, the game film doesn't show a lot more than what you just saw right there. I mean, you really, the end zone view we got is uh, you can't see where the ball is when, when the defender fall, falls over the top of Anthony. 
Um, I thought that it would be a you know tie goes to the runner, tie goes to the receiver type of situation. But uh, because they ruled an interception on the field, um, if there isn't enough video stuff to overturn it, then it's going to stay with the original call. So with the interception, Ball State still gets one more try down 23-21. Under a minute to go, big stand by the defense. Here's a third down that you're able to stop. Yeah, this is a good job here of pressuring him and, and uh, good tight coverage downfield and uh, live to play another day. And then you get the fourth down stop. Now, Coach, tell us about this. On these last two plays, you brought the blitz. What was the thought process behind well, that? Well, you have a, a young quarterback, uh, you know, I've just seen that happen too many times where you're in coverage and, you know, it's, uh, you know, they need a, they need a field goal. So, um, you know, they're on the, down there near the, near the fringe and, and uh, you know, you, you get a pass completed underneath and you miss a tackle or something and, you know, they still have a timeout left. You know, a lot of different things can happen. I just felt like down and distance dictated that uh, we need to bring pressure and, and uh, you know, that's what Coach Colby felt as well, and, and so we pressured, and our guys, uh, you know, executed, and, and it worked out. Ball State can't get the first down on fourth down. 23-21, big sigh of relief. You get the win, first road win of the year, big time. Yeah, it's a great feeling to win, and it's a great feeling to win on the road. Uh, it's great to beat a team that we haven't had much success against, and uh, most importantly, it's great to win in conference and in the division. CMU had lost five straight to Ball State before they won on Saturday, 23-21. When we come back, we got to look ahead to the next opponent. That's the Akron Zips. We'll take a look at the Zips coming up next on Chippewa Rewind. Hey, CMU fans. Experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do around campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. I stand down with you, fight for victory, fight for love to you, we're with you, varsity, rah, 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 uh, in as many weeks, but now it's on to Akron. Halloween Saturday, you go down to Akron to take on the Zips. What do you know about that team? Well, another road game for us, another challenge going on the road, playing in conference. Uh, Coach Bowden, coach team, uh, in his third year, they've shown steady progress. Uh, I haven't watched a lot of them, but I know they got a dual threat quarterback and a, a, a veteran running back. And... Uh, Statistically, I know they're playing very good on defense. So uh, we'll have a workout cut out for us again uh, this week to go get another road victory. Uh, you know, and it'll be uh, another tough, intense, and important week of preparation as we get ready to go back on the road against the team, the third team this year that we face that has an extra week to prepare for us. So challenges abound. How, how tough is that? How much do you put into that, the, the team getting the extra week to get ready for you guys? Quite honestly, I don't put anything into it. Um, sometimes when you're playing well, you just want to keep playing. Um, other than rest and um, probably uh, self-scouting yourself, I don't know how much of an advantage it gives you. Game's on Saturday. It's Halloween. Do you get to do anything kind of fun to celebrate it? Well, it's mostly business, but you never know. You know, we <laughs> might have trick-or-treating on the buses on the way back or something like that. But uh, uh, it's going to be a great week. Um, we're excited. We're looking, looking forward to it. And uh, just want to thank everybody who did show up down there at Ball State. And uh, students will be back home before you know it. Uh, we appreciate all your continued support and fire up chips. Well, the team's certainly rolling. They've won two straight. They're looking to win that third. Hopefully you can do that this next Saturday. That's going to wrap up our show. Central Michigan goes for their third straight win next Saturday on Halloween. Down in Akron, game is at 2 o'clock. 
We'll be back here on Monday to break it all down. For head coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jackson. See you again next week, and of course, fire up chips.